get used to it. You can have dress codes for places that you go to work. Uh, here's why we do that. Because yeah, we're not school. only homeschoolers, but Christians, high schoolers. Like, well, we know you so, so many want to. <laughs> I know. I wouldn't mind dressing professional. Just why can't I wear my like, dress pants? Mm -hmm. Pants well, suits. Because why, why can't I do that? That's because so much they better. let girls wear pants and they will come into, oh, well, these are nice jeans. Correct. Well, these are nice jeans. They just have a few holes in them, but they're still nice These are jeans. nice jeans. Those aren't professional. Oh, oh, so I just say so jeans. Yeah, yeah, no, I but get that. But that's not going to work. No, but nice jeans don't have holes in them. That's not going to work. I know. Ugh. Okay. Pencil skirts. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so anything exciting happen in the news? No. <laughs> We're not entirely new. We're not entirely doomed. I'd say that's probably the best way to describe it, is we're not entirely doomed. We have some potential of actually being a um, decent country under Trump. Not guaranteed, but the potential. Although, I'm a little concerned with the fact that he named uh, Rich Priebus the uh, his chief of staff. I'm not a big fan of Rince. He's uh, head of the Republican National Committee. He was probably one of the only people that would be, I would say, would be establishment Republicans that really stuck with Trump to help him get elected. Um, other than that, it was pretty much um, juniors. So he's named chief of staff. Uh, Ken Blackwell, anybody know who Ken Blackwell is? Ken Blackwell is former Secretary of State for the state of Ohio. Former also, um, let's see, what else? He uh, ran for governor here in the state of Ohio. Did not make it. I actually voted for him. And he has uh, been named to be one of the Donald Trump's, um, he's the head of the domestic transition for Donald Trump. And of course, you know how racist Donald Trump is. <laughs> this is Ken Blackwell. You know, I can't imagine that uh, they would ever elect, you know, you know, as racist Donald Trump is, that he'd ever put a black person on his committee. But he did. There was a meme that was like, Donald and Hillary, and they said, why is it racist to vote for this white man, but not this white woman? That's a good question. Oh, because she's a woman. Because she's, she's a woman. Racist. Racist. So I, uh, Ken Blackwell, I think, is a, is a pretty cool guy. Again, he had some really great ideas when he was going to be uh, um, governor. And, and again, he was Secretary of State until 2007. Huh? <laughs> His birthday is January, let's see, that's Treasurer. Uh, yeah. uh, there it is, uh, February 28th, 1948. You're, you're, you're 48, yeah. You're born in 48, yeah. You really want to have some random guy's birthday? So, uh, so one of the things that I wanted to cover was the election. So one of the, one of the things I always like to do is actually compare these things to previous elections. What? The one for governor in Ohio. Uh, the governor was not up for a re-election. Oh, so it's still John Casey? Yeah. Governor is on off years. So it'll be 2018. Yes. You know how like he's like right now? And, and what if he became president? Like, would he still be governor? And no, no, he would actually no, step down as governor, and uh, Mary, uh, is it Taylor? Tyler? Taylor, Taylor yes. Uh, she would become president, or she would become governor. Yeah, she'd become president. No, she'd become governor um, in his stead. So, one of the things, too, that Trump has to be careful of, so if if, let's say, 
um, President Trump decides that Rob Portman is going to be part of his cabinet. So he appoints Rob Portman to be part of the cabinet. What happens to Rob Portman's Senate seat? Yes. No, it does not. No, it does it not. It not right now. He's can still. He won the election, so he would be seated as the as the Senate. But what happens to him when he leaves that Senate seat? What happens to that Senate seat? Is it just left open until the election? Nope. Just kidding. The governor gets to appoint who gets to be his successor. So. One of the things that you have to do is, right now, if you look at the election results, Senate, uh, the the the, con or, uh, the Republicans hold 51 of the Senate seats, Democrats hold 48, and I think there's still one in dispute. There might be two in dispute, but there's at least one in dispute. And so, right now in the Senate, the Republicans hold the majority. If President Trump, President-elect Trump, appoints somebody from a state that has a Democrat governor, that Democrat governor could appoint a Democrat into that, that Senate seat, which would then take away the, uh, it would bring it back to 50-50. So you have a 50, let's say you have a, now this has happened, this happened under Bush. You have the 50-50 tie in the Senate. Who controls the Senate? Who's the deciding vote in the Senate? The genius who decides to vote against this party, especially. Nope. Would it be the, oh, 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 it's the yeah. vice president, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's the vice president. The vice president is the president pro tem of the Senate. Correct, it's his only job in the entire... <laughs> And Biden actually has done a pretty good job at it. He just sits there <laughs> with his friendship bracelet, as we talked about earlier. We, we, I learned today, I did not know that him and Obama have friendship bracelets of each other. Yeah, exactly. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, so, uh, so, so, the new president pro tem of the Senate would be. The uh, um, would be Pence, who would then be able to divide it up. So under George W. Bush, we had this same, we had this exact thing happen. We had fifty Democrats, fifty Republicans, but the vice president was Republican. Guess what the Republican leadership decided to do? Oh well, we just want to get along with everybody. So we're going to share leadership with the Democrats. Yeah. Wait, what happened? This is why. Huh? Where did that happen? In the Senate, back when George W. Bush was president. They decided they would share the president or share the Senate leadership, which meant that they would have uh, they would have for any of their committees, they would have two chairmen. One for the Democrats one for the Republicans, and they would share equally in the committee responsibilities. So, which is why nothing ever got done in the Senate, because Democrats actually play to win, Republicans play to not lose. And so, the Democrats took great advantage of the Republicans in this and would not confirm any of President Bush's judges, would not confirm any of President Bush's some of his appointments for other lo uh, other positions because of the fact that you know they shared equally. So again, um, why I'm actually glad Trump won because the fact that the Republicans are a bunch of wimps. It's a better word <laughs> yeah. for that, but I'm not allowed to say that in class. <laughs> um, so. But uh, let, if we look at, let's go back to just the 2012 election. You had Obama versus Romney. Obama had two or 332 electoral votes. Uh, Romney had 206. Now, 
Obama had 65,915,000 votes. Romney only had 60,933. How do you think that compares to this year's election? Well, yes, Hillary ends up with more votes. But she was almost 8 million votes lower than what Obama got. Do you think if she'd have gotten those 8 million votes, she might have beat Trump? Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at the numbers between Trump, 60,000, 60,371,000, he actually got less votes than Romney got. So this is not this great big election slam slide, slam dunk that uh, Trump was has been kind of saying, or some of these Republicans have been saying either. This is actually Trump really got lucky that the vote vote did not turn out for the Democrats because they were not as excited about um, Hillary as they were for Obama. And, and again, this is why, too, you'll read some of the commentary going on right now about Hillary, about what a terrible candidate she was. Well, it's clearly evident she is a candidate. Well, I guess she was 5 million below. Um, 61, I mean, she got 4 million less, almost 5, what was it, 5? Yeah, over 5 million less than, uh, than that. But, um, yeah, she might have won that. And now if you also, if you look, though, everybody goes, well, she won the popular vote. Trump didn't win the popular vote. It's clearly evident that we should throw out the Electoral College. But when you look at it, there's like four tiny spots that are blue, and the rest of the country is red, and that's why we have an Electoral College. Correct. Correct. Because New York and L.A. decide they want one person. Everyone else was the opposite. Right. If you look at because of so many people, exactly. Right. If you look at the actual, so here's the here's the electoral map for uh, for Trump or for for this last election. You can see out west, strong. The blue, of course, is uh, the Democrat. Uh, Colorado and New Mexico are now blue states. They used to be red. Uh, Minnesota, Illinois and uh, are the two in the Midwest that kind of lean Democrat, which have for a long time. They, uh, I have this, this is, I like this wow. map here. What so happened to 1964? Can, can we go back then? Can you look at 1972? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, wow, yeah here we go. Nice. Here, so this, okay. this is 84, well, this is, this is Reagan's re-election. This is Reagan's re-election. The 72 and then 64. So you can see here, 56 or 72 was the last time Minnesota actually went uh, Republican. Look at 2018-12. It just continues to go blue. But you look at look at 2004. Yeah, you can see George W. again wins most of the Midwest. Arizona. And then in 2000, you know, he only didn't win uh, New Mexico. Again, he, he win the, wins most of, the, most of the West and the South. And uh, then in 2008 and 2012, again, you see the Republicans winning the South. Minnesota's a red. Oh, yeah. Minnesota's red. In 1984, every single state is red except Minnesota. <laughs> well, that's because Walter Mondale is actually close from Minnesota. Uh -huh. And the thing is, is uh, when they said, oh, great job that, to President Reagan, they go, great job, President Reagan. You know, you've won every, all the states but one. And he goes, we won all the states. Basically saying that they lost in Minnesota because of voter fraud. So... <laughs> So you could see again the the uh, uh, what is that? now we got the, you know why, why what turn the tide was perfect Iowa switch uh, Wisconsin switch Michigan switch Pennsylvania Ohio switch 
Uh, West Virginia stayed the same. Virginia, of course, is always going to vote Democrat because it's near Washington, D.C. Florida switches, and uh, oh, Nevada went. So just a few switches here is what the difference is. If we would have had, like, like you were saying, if we, I haven't, I was trying to find the county um, election results. Uh, county map. Let's see if we can find the county map one. If you look at, I'm not sure if this is for this one. So this is what you typically see. Let's go to their site and see if they. Oh, that's the 2012 one. Again, if you look at, oh, what the heck? yeah, th those are infographics. That one kind of looks, like that looks cool. Do you see how cool it is? So see, see you can see board. here, even in 2008, you can see the really high populated areas actually end up voting for, um, can you guys what? Or one of the like four or five counties in Ohio were blue. Yeah. yeah. Summit. Summit. Mm -hmm. That's where, yeah, I know. I live in Southfield. And like, why didn't I? Care? Yeah, in Ohio this year, there were like two spots in Ohio. Yeah. Let's see if this is. This is bigger cities, too. Yeah. Yeah, Columbus and like Cleveland or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, well, it was like north. It might have been active. Well, it was Summit County, you know. So here's oh, something nice. that somebody was doing, not, and again, you can see on these maps, when they just kind of last up, the high population areas swing towards Democrat. The rural areas swing Republican. Why? Why is it that the high population, yes? In the cities, they're doing a ton of drugs instead of dating Hillary's great. No. In the country, they're doing different kinds of drugs and they date Trump's great. No. <laughs> Why do you think the big cities tend to lean towards the, the Democrats and the rural taxes. taxes? But also, who gets, where, where is more money spent by the federal government? And who spends more of the who who likes to spend more of the money on the federal government? Big, yeah, bigger cities get lots more in federal dollars than the uh, than the, the uh, small than the rural areas. Rural areas tend to be farmers, or what what drove me nuts is kept hearing this thing of the uneducated uh, voter. Really? Yeah. The uneducated voter, you mean all of the people in in South Florida that um, are on welfare or and so forth, those are the educated voter. Mm -hmm. And these people in the middle of the country who of course work farms on a day-to-day -day basis, they're of course uneducated. What? Because they don't go to college? <laughs> yeah. Actually I had a friend who lived in Wisconsin. He had a farm in Wisconsin and went to Purdue for their agricultural program at Purdue, one of the best in the country for agriculture. And they, they owned a massive mint farm. They sell, sold mint to all of the, uh, like uh, if you drink, if you eat uh, any of the gums, spearmint, peppermint, or whatever those gums are, that's uh, what you, uh, you get it from there. So that kind of gives you an idea of some of the mapping. Um, there was, oh, here's one from Clinton Bush, but we can see that better in color. Um, pretty here. Oh, sorry. So, but yeah, you can see here some of the. I mean, look at 1956. <laughs> what happened? 1956. Oh. What about 1972? Oh, I meant 1972. I'm sorry. 72, this one here? <laughs> yeah, look at the states. <laughs> what happened in 72? Who was elected president in 72? Somebody Republican. I hope. No. Reagan was elected in. Uh, Wait, what? Nixon! Oh. What happened after the 72 election? Watergate. 
one huge, huge in 72, and then has to leave office because of uh, scandal. And then look at what happens in 76 because of it. You end up with uh, Carter being uh, elected president. And then, of course, Carter was so bad, in 80, you end up with uh, President Reagan, who again only lost, looks like, four states. And then in 84, re-elected by only losing one state. Yes? Was Kennedy in 64, or who was that? that uh, Kennedy was in 64? I was thinking, and yeah, I think he was in 64. I, I, I wish they'd put underneath who was, you know, who it was. So you had... Uh, so why is Hawaii, or Hawaii and Alaska? Alaska black in 52 and 56? Because they did have a majority. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they weren't states. They weren't states, correct. It's hard to believe to go back into 1950 and they weren't states. Yeah, yeah, there's 10 people living there. All Eskimos. <laughs> Except for Hawaii, of course, there weren't any Eskimos in Hawaii. I've noticed in 1968, there are there a few states that are about uh, pink. It's like, kind of on the side. Yeah. Yeah. But they're pink, which is close to It might have been a third party in 68. Well, and then in 60, there's two green states. Yeah. Map. So if we, let's, let's do a. That was just cool. so cool. Yeah, yeah, that was so cool. Yeah, those are those. I, I love some of the maps that they do for the an analysis. It kind of gives you a what they try to do is they do these pictorial graphs that kind of distort it based on you know the, the to give weight to different things. I just want to go and do it. 1964 presidential election. Wow. Was uh, candidate uh, Johnson. So it was Johnson again, so it was 64. So that means Kennedy ran in 60. So 1960 is Kennedy. Um, so we're Alabama, Mississippi. No. They were states, but they probably voted third party. Oh, they voted for the Green Party. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> This was a huge blow um, for Nixon. Kennedy got uh, Kennedy ends up winning Illinois, but a lot of uh, there was a lot of voter fraud that went on in Illinois during that election. The dead were voting; uh, they were actually coming out of their grave. It was the revelation and casting votes. That's for so Kennedy. Awesome. This what? I'm joking. Oh. The dead were voting. In, but the world is also twenty twelve. So. <laughs> No, it, yeah, in, uh, in 1960, the uh, Mafia helped uh, the Kennedy family. Um, the belief is, is that John Kennedy's dad was very, very connected to the Mafia in Illinois. And he got a lot of his money by running alcohol during Prohibition. And so what happens is, is of course, John ends up winning. But then his brother ends up going against the mafia, and that's one of the reasons why they think John was John was killed, and then later Robert was, of course, assassinated as well because of the uh, the mafia getting back at him. And then Johnson wins in '64, which probably he ends up winning in a in a uh, landslide again, mainly because people Americans are stupid. And so we vote for Johnson because Johnson, you know, John uh, Kennedy had been assassinated. No, we feel sorry, so we vote the person in. Uh, that also happened at uh, recently in just in recent years. Um, under during when Bush was president, there was a a candidate who died, and in I think it was Missouri, the Missouri Senate race. The candidate died, so the wife decided to run, 
who had no experience, and the stupid Missourians voted her in. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, that, uh, that's I'll tell America. you what, that's America. That's, that, that's, you know, we talked earlier about Will Smith might be the candidate. Oh, sarcastically. Yes. I, was I was being sarcastic. I know you were, but <laughs> that's the problem with America. He could win. I mean, think about it. Americans love watching Kim Kardashian, the Kardashians. It's so stupid, though. I know. It is. <laughs> okay, but America <laughs> Americans, in many set respects, are stupid. We are stupid. Most of us. That is why we have Trump and Hillary um, as our candidates. I saw a tweet the other day. It's like uh, right after Trump was elected. It's like, well, I guess we do need to be made great again. I'm like, yeah, we, we, we do because people are protesting. Yeah, we're gonna look at that here. Yeah. But when Obama won, uh, nobody said anything. Like, you know why? You know why? Yes. We have, have you ever watched anything about like the, how the Jimmy Johnson treated the Kennedys when he became president? No, I didn't. I haven't uh, read much of that at all. Well, he was like, he was like, he like in public he was trying to show sympathy, but behind closed doors he was like. We're gonna have this big procession to make me look great when I escort you off the plane, like to Mrs. Kennedy, off the plane, with the clock and everything. Yeah, they, they were not. That is sad. So some of the other things that were, like I was uh, talking about, um, right now the Republicans have uh, 51 of the Senate seats, and they have 239 of the House seats, which 218 is required for a majority. So they're 21 above above that. So what will be interesting is typically what happens on the off-year election, the, the party that holds the presidency loses that, the, house, the House of Representatives. It's typically what has happened since Bill Clinton's been president. Um, so we'll see what happens in this case. I think if Trump doesn't get done what he says he's going to get done, he will probably lose the House. And if the economy tanks, he will lose the House. If he doesn't build the wall or at least the fence or start curbing some of this stuff uh, on immigration, he's going to lose the House. And my guess is if he doesn't get done what he says he's going to get done, he will probably not get reelected, just like George W. George H. Bush, when George H. Bush said, read my lips, no new taxes, and then ended up raising taxes, the people remembered that and voted him out. He's the first president to ever be uh, that won a war during his presidency and didn't win re-election. So. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Republicans tend to be less forgiving than the Democrats. Um, They're the ones that are out there protesting. Right. You were out there protesting? Free college, right? What I want to know is they're all, oh, love Trump's hate, love Trump's hate. Okay, okay, what are you out there doing? You're hating on Trump. But if love Trump's hate, why well, get over it and make a difference another way? Actually, they're... Um, I wonder if uh, exactly. my brush has got this up on his site. You know what I love about that love Trump's hate? Is that love was in red and hate was in blue. Hate was in the Senate also. Nobody is a The animal for it is a donkey, which is also known as a. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And so Clinton is what? Blue. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> no, the other word. Yeah, yeah. Mule. Yeah, she's a mule. Yeah, mule. Mule. You know why? She should push it. Mule's push it. Oh, I'll let it have you. No, she's way too tired to take any of seriously. Oh no. There was uh, there, Rush was talking <laughs> earlier on today. Rush was talking about the fact that uh, uh, most of these protesters are being bused in to do the protesting. 
It's not real, live, uh, spontaneous protests. Some of them are, but most of them have not been. Like the one at UCLA, uh, of course they're stupid out there in UCLA. Um, they were, I guess they came out of their dorms protesting that Trump got elected. And of course then there was uh, Mike Evans, the wide receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, decided that he was going to sit and pout during the national anthem yesterday. <laughs> um, and not uh, not stand during the national anthem because Trump won the election. It's like really get over yourself. You know, I'm so done with the NFL. I'm just so done with them. Like, what um, are they going to do about it by sitting there and protesting? Well, they think they're doing something. They yeah, think they're trying to. Get, they're, they think they're saying something. They're 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 they're, they're uh, standing in unison. It's it's like. Uh, um, they ask the, and this kind of goes to the problem. They asked the commissioner, uh, the NFL commissioner, how he was going to handle the Trump getting elected. And, you know, he's like, well, you know, I got two daughters. And I, you know, how do I explain this to my two daughters? Simply, Hillary's husband was a lying, thieving uh, womanizer. And Trump was a, is a womanizer as well. But, you know, hey, at least Trump didn't embezzle millions of dollars and... Well, not that Hillary did, but it kind of looks suspicious. So I hope the truth about Hillary comes out into the news, but I'm a I have no belief that it actually will, unfortunately. So let's see. Anything else about the, oh here's some interesting <clears throat> interesting things from the uh, election. So if we look at white women with no no college degree. Um, white women with no college degree, 34% of them voted for Trump, uh, Hillary, 62 voted for Trump. They made a good choice. So, but now if you go to white women with a college degree, 45% for Trump, 51 for Hillary. So the more you're indoctrinated by our educational system, the more likely you are to vote for Hillary. That's what that tells me. Okay, so let's look at men. White men with a college degree. 54% voted for Trump. 439. Now white men without a college degree. What website are you on? <laughs> this is the Washington Post. The world is smart. Seventy-two percent. Again, the more likely you are to be indoct, the longer you're indoctrinated, the more the percentage goes up. Um. So let's see here. Let's go black. Black men. Eighty-two percent of black men voted for. Whoa. Yeah, you should. Girl, I'm black. Okay. All of you. Like, what's up, guys? You messed up. Then they would just no, be like, only 11. So okay, so with, this is with no college degree. Now, let's add a college degree. Wow. Interesting. With a college degree, actually, the numbers voting for this is the one we're adding a college degree, the vote goes up for Trump. Now, let's look at black women. What do you think? Worse than black men? Probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Ninety-one percent of black women vote for Hillary. Because Trump's the really smart one. Yeah, you'd be in the six percent. Yeah, no. How about with the ninety-five percent of black women with no college degree? Again, there's another one where it's the at the college degree, the number of people voting for Trump actually goes up. Surprisingly. Okay, wait. Really now let's look at Hispanic. Okay, this must be interesting. What do you think the Hispanic one is? Hispanic women with no college degree. 70% go to Hillary, 25% to Donald. With a college degree. Goes up. Good job. 65 28. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit better. But those numbers don't count. There's five percent missing there. What about men? So okay, Hispanic well, men. Not everyone voted. Sixty-two, thirty-two. Well, 
<laughs> now, without a college degree, there you go. It's going up a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here's the thing. Democrats were thinking that Trump's view on the wall, building a wall between the U.S. and Mexico, was racist, and therefore the Hispanic vote would be like the black vote, would just be overwhelmingly dominant for uh, Hillary. It's not. If you look at the vote, the Hispanic vote, it's like 65 to 28 to 30 percent. They weren't expecting him to get thir near 30 percent of the vote from the Hispanics. So that's that's a, that's an interesting statistic. The, they tried to portray Trump as building a wall as racist, and it didn't totally well, work. Right. Well, let's do one. Okay, so let's look at. Um, Non-white, I don't know what that's well, Non-white! <laughs> it means different hey, I, I don't know if that means it's black and Hispanic put together or what, but... <laughs> so you can see here, 65, 28, there's really not... This amazes me that Not much um, of a switch for her supporters Hillary. Are so women, 81% of women... You're stupid. No. 76% of women. Oh, well. So... We already looked at white. Oh, it's true. So now we can get down here. If we look at, of course, overall, just look at some general categories. We got men. Fifty-three percent of men voted for uh, for uh, Trump. Trump. Forty-one for Hillary. Women. Fifty-four percent of women voted for. Of course, uh, she's all Hillary. for women. Forty-two. In fact, actually, a friend of mine. Uh, she was at a place. They ripped her apart because she was a woman who voted for Trump. How could you vote as a woman vote for Trump? And oh. what you're saying is, oh, okay, so as a woman, I have to vote for Hillary. No, well, how would you vote? Well, no, exactly. Uh, okay. So then if you look at race, 58% of whites voted for uh, Trump, 37 for Hillary. 88% of the African-American community wow. vote for vote for Hillary, 8% voted for Trump. That's really scary. Latino, Hispanic, 65 for Hillary, 29. Asian, supposedly, you know, Asian's supposed to be smart, 65 for Hillary, 29. So they didn't vote much different than, than that, than the other. What is other when it comes to race? <laughs> Um, oh, voted 56 to 37. Maybe it's the Russian people. <laughs> it's often dead people. What? So now, let's look at education. What? If you're high school, you got a high school graduate or less, 51%. Hallelujah, we are smarter. Some Gosh. college degree, some college degree, 52%. It doesn't change until you get actually get your degree. 49, 45. Oh, it's stupid. actually not, it's pretty close. But then if you go, if you're postgraduate, if you got your doctorate, your master's. You, you got smarter again. So I don't know you're 58%. You got smarter again. You mean stupid? So oh, yeah. <laughs> here, here's the Democrats. 9% of Democrats voted for Trump. Good job, Democrats. 7% of Republicans voted for Hillary, but 90%, of course, voted for Trump. For Trump. Yeah, I would hope so. Look at the independents, 48% to 42%. Yeah, I, well, I wish they'd put some of the third party. Oh, age. Here you go, age. Of course. Does not give you much help. The yellow dot's probably here. Yes. Yeah. A lot. Of, so, or any of the other. My, uh, my one son did not vote for the presidential in the presidential election. He voted. He voted in the election, but not for the president. And the other one voted third party. So, um, fifty-five. She, uh, you're younger. You're being indoctrinated. Fifty-five for Hillary. Thirty-seven for Trump. Thirty to four. It, it starts getting closer. 50, 42, then you get when you get older, 50, 45 to 64, 53 percent, 
And if you're over 65, yeah, obviously, when you get older, you get wiser. Yeah, why? Well, I, I you can see it. it. Once it gets to like our generation, we're actually going to know what we're so doing. So here's something, something that this, so cool. this will tell you, though. Are you lesbian, gay, bisexual, or, or transgender? Look how small the circles are that said yes. Those circles are small. That means the population, the number of population, is very tiny. Yeah. Look how big the population, the number is here. This is a clear indication to people that there aren't that many gays, transgender, and bisexuals out there. Most people don't identify as that. But 48, 47, Trump. Wow. That's just wrong. Income. If you make less than 50,000, you are more than likely to vote for Hillary. I wonder if that counts the four. Yeah. You're on welfare. Yeah. So if you make between 50 and 99, Trump gets the nod. If you make 100,000 or more, Trump so barely funny. gets the nod over Hillary. Again, yeah, so kind of to show you that um, the, the difference is the difference between the the rich um, uh, for who they vote for. You know, based on what you hear from the news media, you would think that the rich would be way out here for Trump. It's the party of the rich, but it's really not. They're both equally, they both equally have their hands in the pie there. Um, Sorry, this bill comes in more likely to vote for Trump. No. Well, unless he, you know, wants somebody to go party with. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's even some more stuff. I'll send you guys this link. It's in the Washington Post. You guys can go through it. Oh, here you go. Ideology. So if you were, if you classify yourself as liberal, ten percent of the liberals voted for Trump. But if you vote, if you said you were conservative, now I do not know how, as a conservative, you can vote at all for Hillary. I could see you voting third party, but I could not see you at all voting for Hillary. And then uh, Protestant, if you're a Protestant, 58%. This one shocked me that uh, you actually, he won the uh, Catholic vote. Usually Catholics tend to lean towards the Democrats for a long time. Something else. What is? <laughs> or what? Something else. Something else, else. Something else. Something else. Something else should put know. in Protestant or other Christian. Where's Muslim? Uh, that's probably else? something else. <laughs> so here was. So this was an interesting stat. If you were a white evangelical or born again white born again Christian, is what they would term it. You're smart. 81% of them voted for it. Yeah, praise the Lord. Now, it was, it was, it was interesting. Uh, a pastor friend of mine, a pastor friend of mine wrote an article on, wrote a, on his blog about this and talked about the fact that he didn't say who he voted for, but he said, hey, my vote counted. That's the important thing. But what we really need to do is focus in on furthering the kingdom of Christ. We wrote this long article. He had a bunch of people, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. But then he had one person who said, basically lambast him. How, how could evangelicals vote for Donald Trump? You know, he doesn't stand for this, this. You know, he, he hates women. He uh, doesn't care about the poor. He doesn't do any of this. And uh, it basically was lambasting the 81% that voted for Trump. My pastor friend turned that back around to him and goes, I think maybe you th need to rethink about where your position is at. If 80, you're telling me that 81% of evangelicals got it wrong. Maybe, as an evangelical, you need to think about where your position is and the fact that you voted for Hillary. What did you miss? And second, you say Trump is not for the, the poor, or women or children, how is Hillary for the women and children? 
She doesn't give any of her money to people that, to do this. She gives your money to people. That's to me, I, I don't care what it is. My first question to anybody who says they're liberal and says that we need to tax the rich and give it to the poor, I, I always ask, how is that compassion you taking money from one other person and giving it to somebody else. That's not compassion. Compassion is you give your money to a person. Not somebody else's. You give of your own money. And most of the time, if you look at these Democrats, and even some of the Republicans, you look at these people, they don't give much of their own money away. You look at the Obama administration's tax returns compared to Mitt Romney's, they gave a minuscule amount of money, the Obamas did, to charities before they got elected. They still don't give that much to charities. No, because they like giving your money, for those of you who are working, and my money to charity. And that's, that's where we as conservatives and, and or even libertarians need to start making the argument is taking money from one person and giving it to another is not compassion. It's theft. It's stealing somebody else's productivity and giving it to somebody who's not productive. So, um, I, I, uh, one of my friends came up with an idea. Oh, you know, for those of you who are younger and want to um, you know, your generation and even a little bit older, even some in my generation. Oh, you gotta worry about the climate change and global warming. Oh, we're all gonna burn to death. No, we're not gonna burn to death. Um, the people who worry about climate change and they want the government to fix it, they want the government to regulate all this stuff. You know what? I, I like the guy, he, he came up with an idea. If you're for climate change and you want to help the environment, fine. We're not going to spend any more taxpayer dollars on it, but guess what? We're going to create a fund that you can contribute to if you want to save the, save the earth. And you know what? Guess what? Put your own money to it. And until you're ready to put your own money to it, then we're not spending any of ours or anybody else's. And so I thought, wow, that's a great idea. I'm, I'm all for that. I saw so many ads like on Monday and Tuesday we thought, oh, Oh, for Hillary, Trump says global warming isn't happening. It's like, not. It's not. But he, I don't think so either, but he did buy insurance for his golf courses in Ireland in case of global warming. Well, of course. <laughs> what? Okay, but that's what, that's what that's all these businesses do. That's what all these businesses do because, because uh, uh, any kind of, you look, any kind of weather disaster today that happens, the hurricane that hit along the East Coast recently. What did they attribute to that to? It's global warming, climate change. What do you mean? We've been having hurricanes for years. It's not something new. Um, but yet we still continue. I, I, I got in a debate with a couple of people who were uh, saying that we were destroying the, the environment, that global, uh, global warming was happening and it's man-made. See, now global warming may be happening, but I do not not believe in man-made global warming. Well, because you drive your car to work or to wherever every day, and you put off carbon dioxide, and you breathe. That does it, too, because you breathe. That gives off carbon dioxide. And you know what? You're even worse if you run or ride a bike, because you put off more carbon dioxide. So all of you need to sit at home and do nothing, because you give off too much carbon dioxide. How about this? The people who that global warming is happening can do their part by not breathing and then problem solved. Right. <laughs> well, I, have, I will say that I would agree. We can start with Leonardo DiCaprio. Exactly. <laughs> Leonardo! I don't know about the that. What? <laughs> well, Leonardo DiCaprio came out, he, I guess he's doing a new uh, documentary himself where he's, I've been around the world and we're destroying the environment. So I was with this. I was in this argument with two uh, oh. two climate change people, and I asked them. I said, "So, what's the number one cause of global warming in in the world?" And they're like, "CO two pollution, all this." And I said, "Okay, so I'm wrong. It's the sun. It's the sun. The sun controls the temperature of our planet. 
And as the output of the sun goes up, our temperature goes up. As the output of the sun comes down, our temperature comes down, which is why we have cold winters and warm winters, and cold summers and warm summers. The other thing that causes this is what this little thing we call weather. <laughs> the number one cooling, what you guys know what the number one cooling effect in the in the world is? Wind. No. <laughs> Rain. It's the natural cycle of things to cool areas off. And typically when things get too hot, guess what? We end up with thunderstorms, which tend tends to you ever go outside after a thunderstorm? Yeah, unless you're in Florida, of course. If you go in if, if you're in a thunderstorm in Florida, it's generally when you go out, it's worse. But if you go out in a thunderstorm here in, in up north, what's generally the condition? It's like, ooh, it's like five degrees cooler. This is great. <laughs> Not in Florida, you go, the man, it's still hot. And oh. now it's humid. So because mm -hmm. Florida's like that. Yep, Florida's like that. It's a tropic. So that's that's the thing that I always tell these guys. I'm like, dude, dude, it's the sun. So I propose that we put up a big shield to block the sun. Are you kidding me? That would no. We have some that's potato good. companies with like billions more dollars. Because yep. everyone wants to look tan, but they don't want to worry about it. Right. But then it would absorb the heat and therefore it may be causing it to be warmer because that was a thing. No, not, not the shield. If you build a shield out in space between us and the sun, the sun would never reach it. It would have to be some tinted glass type thing. But at least we'd solve global warming. Oh no. We'd all live like the Eskimos. <laughs> I already do. So here's some of the other things that they, they talked about is what quality of the candidate matters most can bring me to change. Uh, that was heavily Trump, cares about what people like me. No surprise, Trump gets 35% if that was, a, if that was an, an issue that you like. Well, has good judgment. I cannot believe 66% of the people think Hillary's got good judgment. Of that, if that has, has the right experience. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no. No. But now remember, no. remember, these are four issues. And if you said that this issue is your important issue, or this, so people who said that this was their important issue, ninety percent of them said that Hillary had the right experience. She may not have the right experience, but she had more political experience. And yes, that's exactly. But there's a difference between the right yes, experience but the and political who voted for Hillary. Or so so you can see that. Here's, here's the thing. If, if you expect life for the next generation to be better than today, you 50, 59% voted for Hillary. If they said about the same, 39% or 54 is still. So if you thought that life for the future people was going to be about the same, you voted for that same or better, you voted for Hillary. I thought this one was interesting. But if you thought it was going to be worse, you voted for Trump because your thinking is is that the direction we're going on, and that's a much bigger circle than either one of those. Well, it might be a little, but almost the same size. So, also, of course, if you lived in a small city, boom, heavily for Trump. If you lived in a uh, if you lived in the suburbs, Trump. If you lived in the city, a big city, Hillary. Now here's military. Sixty-one voted. Sixty-one percent. I was kind of surprised that this was. Of course, that's not active duty. It's people who served. And then if you didn't, Hillary wins the non. So that. So that's kind of some interesting infographics on some of this stuff. Um, to go over with the election. I always like looking through this because it gives you such a good perspective of what people were think uh, people are thinking, and I really do believe that the Republican Party has, you know, based on looking at this, the Republican Party has some problems with 
the black community and the Hispanic community. But the problem is what the Republicans want to do to solve those problems are by saying, oh, yeah, we'll make life better. We'll increase welfare. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll be for gay, bisexual, transgender people too. When what they should be doing is saying, why is it important to have smaller government? Because you can then go and more easily do what you want to do. You get to keep your money. So um, I think I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Trump will spur on some more of this education and uh, spur on a, a more of a discussion on a lot of these ideas rather than just um, continuing to just trying to reach out to other people. Because I, from what I've always seen, if you look back at this graphic here, anytime the Republicans tend to be more uh, liberal, lean towards the left, they lose bad. Mitt Romney, 2012. John McCain, 2008. Two very, very weak Republicans. 2004, George W. Bush was considered a strong Republican. 2000, George Bush was considered a strong Republican versus uh, Al Gore. 90, uh, 96, when Clinton got elected, Bob Dole, very, very weak Republican. Um, 92, uh, against, of course, uh, very weak George W. Bush or George H. Bush. But you look, when, when George H. Bush was considered a strong conservative, he trounced, um, uh, who was it? I think it was Dukakis that he ran against in, two, in 88. 84, Reagan, strong, strong conservative, wins big. 1980, strong, again, wins big. Weak Jerry, uh, Gerald Ford against Carter, weak Republican. 72, strong Republican in Nixon, wins. 68, again, weak. Uh, compared to the other candidate. And you go down and you can see when you have a strong conservative message, wins. Now, the problem is, the last 20 years since Reagan, since 88, we have not done a very good job of teaching conservatism and the importance of it in schools or to the next generation. And it's going to get to a point where, you know, where the country will turn socialist and communist. And that's the concern here is that for this next election, we may end up electing a communist or a socialist. So, okay. Uh, no class next week. It's Thanksgiving. Yes, turkey and ham. Yes, I need your homework. And oh, by the way, uh, I was sending out grades. So I have your grades done. Oh, but she only goes Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so she still has Monday, Wednesday. Yeah, she does. So let your parents know. I'll be sending all down. I still hate that I have to go to school once. Once. Out of my four times. No, this is like the first time I've had some actual paper. Milestone day.